Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today I've got a nice problem that I found on the Math Stack Exchange. So you can find it easily with the following identifying number. What I think is really cool about this fact is it involves three of my favorite things. The floor function, the factorial operation, and the famous Euler constant E. And in fact, what we'll show here is that the floor of n factorial over e is always an even number where n is taken to be a natural number. So I made a list of the first couple of cases of this. So for n equals 1 and 2, we'll clearly get 0 because we'll have 1 factorial and 2 factorial, which is 1 and 2 respectively. Those are each less than e, which means we get a number between 0 and 1, the floor will be 0. And then after that, we'll have 3 factorial over e, its floor is 2, and then we have 8, 44, 18, 54, and so on and so forth. So you can see that all the numbers on the board are even. I think we're good to go. Just kidding. So let's see how we'll do this in general. So let's start with n factorial times 1 over e, but I'll rewrite 1 over e in its series expansion. So that'll be the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the m over m factorial. And again, that's using this series expansion formula for, maybe we'll write it down for e to the x just to be careful. So we've got the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over, sorry, x to the m over m factorial. Where here we're just taking m to be negative 1, so that gives us 1 over e. Okay, so now maybe the first thing that you might want to do is split this up into two sums. One sum that goes up to this number n factorial and then everything after that. And that's because the sum that goes all the way up to n factorial is going to be a sum of natural numbers, or I guess I should say of integers since it's alternating here. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to the sum as m goes from 0 up to n of minus 1 to the m, and then we'll have n factorial over m factorial. Okay, nice. And then we'll have plus all of the rest of it. So this will be the sum as m goes from n plus 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the m, and then we'll have n factorial over m factorial. So the same sum, just different indices. Okay, and now let's hone in on the fact that we have an alternating sum here, and thus the parity of n will determine whether or not we start this remainder part with a plus sign or a minus sign. So that motivates us to split this into two cases based on the parity of n. Okay, so let's look at our first case, which will be when n is an odd number, which means that n plus 1 is an even number. And now let's look at these two summands separately. So we'll start by looking at this one that I will underline in yellow like this. Okay, so let's see if we can decompose this to get a feel for what's going on. So I'll take this and I'll split off the last two terms. So I'll write this as the sum as m goes from 0 to n minus 2, and then we'll have minus 1 to the m, and then we'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial over m factorial, where I just took the first couple of terms out of the n factorial. And then I'll have my next term, which is attached to n minus 1, and that'll be attached to a plus sign because n minus 1 and n plus 1 have the same parity. And that'll give me n factorial over n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so like I said, that's the n minus first term. And then the nth term will be minus n factorial over n factorial. Okay, so we can do some simplification. So this thing that I'm boxing in green will cancel down to the number n just by the certain, by the standard factorization of this n factorial. And then this n factorial over n factorial is clearly equal to the number one. Now we wanna hone in on everything that else that is put together in the sum right here. And let's note that since m is between 0 and n minus 2, 
we know that this stuff that I'll box in orange is indeed a natural number. That's because we've got n minus two factorial over m factorial, and n minus two at least is equal to m if not exceeds m. So this is like five factorial over four factorial is always a natural number. A thousand factorial over 700 factorial is always a natural number, and so on and so forth. That's what's happening with this stuff which is in the orange box. But then also, we know that n plus one is even, which means n minus one is also even. So that means every term from this big sum right here is even. So in the end, this big sum is equal to an even number and then plus n minus one. But let's recall that we've talked about n minus one being even quite a bit, so that means that this whole sum right here is even. Okay, so let's gather that information up here. So like I said, we know all of this up here is even. And now let's go ahead and get to work on our remainder portion over here. Okay, so let's bring this down here. And recall that n plus one is even, which means if we were to write this out, it starts with a positive term. And that positive term would be something like one over n plus one. And then the next term will be negative. It'll be minus one over n plus one times n plus two. The next one will be positive and it'll be this rising product n plus one, n plus two, n plus three. The next one will be negative and so on and so forth. But notice that this is an alternating series, most definitely. And the terms of this alternating series decrease. Furthermore, we'll recall from a standard calculus class that if you have an alternating series where the terms are decreasing, then an upper bound for that series is given by the very first term. So that means that the largest this can be is one over n plus one. But just to keep it real loose, that means that this object is on the interval zero to one. Well, it can't exceed one over n plus one, but n could be equal to one, so it really can't ex exceed one half. And then why, why is it positive, you say? Well, I'll let you guys check that. I don't think that's too tricky to check. Okay, so now let's collect that here. So this thing that I have in my pink underline is an element of the set from zero to one. So it's bound below by zero and above by one. Okay, so now let's start putting it together. I'd now like to take just a moment to talk about the sponsor that made today's video possible, Brilliant.org. If you're a lifelong learner of math, science, or computer science, you might want to consider Brilliant. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands of lessons on a variety of topics ranging from simple to advanced. There's even new material added every month, so you'll never run out. No matter what your learning style is, Brilliant's interactive and unique take with hands-on puzzles and graphics will have you mastering skills in no time. Recently, I've been enjoying learning about some topics outside of mathematics. Currently, I'm working through their course on neural networks, and it's been really great. You should go check that one out. So what are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Michael Penn or go to the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now we're ready to make our final calculation in this first case. So let's look at this floor of n factorial over e, like I said. And so this is most definitely gonna be bigger than or equal to this stuff that I have in yellow. And that's because without the floor, it's most definitely bigger than what I have in yellow because it's this left-hand side of the equation. But then this stuff that in, that's in yellow is a natural number, so applying the floor does not change it. And so that gives us the inequality that is required. Okay, so let's maybe put a yellow box here just to say that this is bigger than or equal to that big expression that I have in yellow, which as we recalled before is an even number. But then since we've applied the floor to it, it's going to be less than or equal to this whole thing right here. But let's notice that this whole thing is equal to this yellow part which I no longer need the parity of, and the number one because of that pink part right there. <clears throat> 
So we've bound the floor of n factorial over e between an even number and that even number plus one, and one of those bounds was strict while the other one wasn't. So that means that since we've got it between two consecutive integers, we set up the equality that this floor of n factorial over e is this even number back over here. And that finishes the argument for this first case. So the second case is fairly similar, so we'll work through that more quickly. Now we're gonna look at the second case, which is the case when n is even, which means n plus one is odd. Now in this setup, our remainder term is between negative one and zero. Instead of between zero and one, that's because we start with a negative number instead of a positive number. Okay, another little homework exercise that I'll give you, which is essentially what we did before, is to show that the floor of n factorial over e in this case is equal to negative one plus this sum right here, which is the first n minus two terms broken out. And then this is the n minus first term, and then this is the nth term. Notice that the signs are different based off the fact that our parity of n is different. Now we're gonna do essentially the same kind of thing. So we've got n factorial over n, sorry, n minus two factorial over n here. We know this whole thing is a natural number just given the bounds on m. In this setup, we took n to be even. So that means this right here is an even number, which means everything wrapped up in this sum is an even number. But also let's notice that we've got a minus one built into this and a plus one built into this. So in the end, we're left with an even number minus n. But remember this case is when n is an even number. So this is actually just an even number in the end, which is exactly what we wanted. So I've done some other videos on the channel where we prove some things about e. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.